Hi everyone, for my video today, I'm going to be talking about these two brushes. I purchased this off of foodabogo.com and these are actually Koyudo by Yushiki brushes. Now, for our video today, I'm going to be concentrating talking about this particular brush, the High Grand Psycho Foundation Brush. And the main reason why is because this is new to me. While this brush here, this Silver Fox um, Highlight and Cheek Brush is not new to me. And I actually received one before from Foodabogo, um, like, you know, a sort of like a PR package and I fell in love with it and because I loved it so much I decided to buy another one like you know to add into my kit so if you want to know more about my experience using this brush especially like you know my first impressions I'm gonna put a link down on the description box to that video so you can go and check it out this like you know Kuyudo by Yoshiki highlight and cheek brush in silver fox is actually so amazing and at this point I actually enjoy using this to apply contouring all over the face and not so much with highlighting and blush because I just love the shape of this and it fits perfectly into the cheekbones okay so anywho if you want to see this in action head to the video the link is on the description box okay now the main reason why I decided to purchase this high grand psycho foundation brush is because of the brush head design here now as you guys can see if I just put this in front of me today you guys can see that it almost resembles that of the base one the previous one from um, Sonia G but now that I have both of these brushes in my possession and if we just put them side by side we can actually see that they are not the same basing off of the fact that the brush head of the base one here is actually smaller in comparison to that of the high grand psycho Ho foundation brush here from um, Kuyudo by Yushiki so again look at that very different also the size of the brush head very different but I do have to say that the base one here, when it really like you know gets pressed as close to the base as possible, it almost flares out like you know as the same circumference as the Koyudo by Yushiki brush. Look at that. And also one other thing, as you guys can see, I know that you might think initially that the color of the handles here are the same, but it actually is not. Because the Sonya G here, like not only for this very old, like you know, base one brush, but like you know, for the Pro brush series from Sonya. Um, the red in the handle is like you know darker, deeper, more moody, more blue tones in it. While the Koyudo by Yoshiki um, a brush here has a much more like you know warmer orangey like you know tone in the red of it. Okay. Now that I have done this like you know short comparison, I could clearly say that the um, Koyudo Yoshiki brush here is actually closer to that of the Sonia G um, smooth buffer brush here. To take a look at that, um, there's just a slight difference in the length of the bristles here, wherein the smooth buffer has longer bristles, especially if we just you know, put them here right at the very like, you know, base of the um, brush head here. So it's actually a little bit longer than this one. And in terms of the way like, you know, the brush head splays, the smooth buffer here, again, it like, you know, it, it kind of like, um, it doesn't bloom as wide as this Yoshiki foundation brush here, because I'm sure you guys can see how wide this brush head blooms out. So this one, it kind of like curves inward, as you guys can see. And then, um, as you guys can see also in this position, we can see that the Koyudo by Yoshiki brush head here is actually a little bit larger than the smooth buffer of Sanyuji. And if you press them together, look at that. Again, they almost like, you know, uh, they almost have the same, like, you know, the full circumference of it. Oops. But I do think that um, the smooth buffer, it just blooms out, like, you know, in a much more larger sense because after all, the bristles are actually longer in comparison to that of the Yoshiki Foundation flat top brush. Now, both of these brushes, if you take a look at it, they have flat top design so it's a very traditional like you know kabuki type of brush design but now that i'm feeling both brushes in my hand like you know i'm just trying to feel the comparison here both are like you know equally smooth very silky to the touch and even if this is like you know made of like you know dyed goat hair it still feels very very luxurious and also with this one but the thing with the smooth buffer you can only use this for powder because that's the thing is with dyed and also like you know with very like you know difficult types of um, powder formulas like you know 
um, gelée formulas, like, you know, hard pressed powders, you can use this. Well, this one, I'm sure you can use this for a variety of, like, you know, powder, and for sure you can use this with cream products as well. But now that I'm just, like, you know, playing with the brush head at the palm of my hand, I can say that when I just, like, you know, press the brush head of this Koyudo by Yoshiki Foundation brush here on my palms, I can feel that there's a certain bounce to the brush head. And there's a strength at the core of the brush here, especially here in the middle. Not so much here at the outer portions of the brushes where it actually blooms. And if I just press it, I'm sure you guys can see the resistance that this brush hit gives us. It's kind of interesting to me. Now, in terms of difference, so this is the smooth buffer. And if I just like, you know, pat it here onto my palm and to press it there's a certain uniformity of like you know strength in the core of this um, now that I'm just like you know repressing it um, there's an even distribution of like you know I um, like you know density of bristles wherein if you press it like you know it plays out together while this one like you know um, it kind of like dances around it it um, it doesn't have that smooth type of um, like you know a press down as the smooth buffer okay now let me just get the other brush from sonya g so this is the um buffer pro now this one if we put all of these brushes together we can see that this will be the big sister this can be the middle sister and this can be like you know the youngest child basing off of the um difference of like you know density of the brush head and also the size and the length of the bristles now this one the buffer pro if i just press it so it actually has the same characteristics as the Koyudo by Yoshiki Foundation brush, wherein there's a like you know slight spring in the brush head when you press it on the palm of my hand. And there's a core in the strength of the belly here. And as you guys can see, it acts almost similarly as the smooth buffer, but it also acts like the Koyudo by Yoshiki Foundation Kabuki brush here. I'm sure you guys can see that spring. In the bristles here and also like you know in the movement there's an abrupt like you know change in um, direction when I do that and in terms of feeling like you know, when I'm just doing that thing at the palm of my hand both of these brushes feel quite similar to each other but then again with the Sonia G brush here you have that very nice smooth like you know um, movement of the brush when you press it down into your palms of your hand and the main difference that I have noticed between these two brushes is that the buffer pro it's a little bit domed wherein um, the length of the bristles here is a little bit like you know, longer here in the middle while this one is like you know directly flat on the top can you guys see that see so when you use this you actually load the product here in the middle and then when you press the brush on your face or like you know on your cheek it depresses a little bit and it lines up together and this gives it its like you know nice buffing ability while this one because of its flat top like you know kabuki design when you load product here for sure you're going to get all of the product here on the brush um, and then you might have to really work the brush um, just to like you know blend the product out so it will not give you like you know concise application if it did I think it's just going to be a little bit too like you know the, the product or the color that you're going to be applying on your face might just be a little bit too big and it will not be as precise as you want it to be okay now as I've said earlier this is like a kabuki type of like you know brush head and it kind of like reminds me of the Hakuhodo Mizubake brush here wherein again we have this very traditional uh, like you know um, flat top kabuki type of design now in terms of like you know softness of bristles of course because this is made of psycho goat hair this is going to be amazingly soft on the skin because this one i think this is made of hakutotsuho i'm not too sure yet but as you guys can see let me just put these two brushes to the side you can see the difference in airiness between these two brushes look at that and unfortunately this one actually disturbs like you know some of the foundation products or like you know the powder products that I um, use on the face but when I use this with cream and like, you know, liquids it's actually amazing but since this one is also airier I actually like using this brush for like you know powder foundation or powder products because when I press it it like you know really encompasses a very large real estate on my face so it just gives me like it lessens my time of actually applying 
like you know um, powder or foundation powder on the face and of course because it's airier than this brush this will apply a much more lighter coverage on the skin than for sure this one but we'll try out how this will work for us later in the video okay yeah so these are like you know my uh, flat top type of brushes that I have in my collection and let's just put the base one here just for like you know remembrance sake I actually love this brush I hope this comes back in some sort of like different like you know um, reincarnation from Sonia's um, collection oh one more thing by the way as I've said earlier I got a new Yoshiki um, silver fox highlight and cheek brush here and I've also stated that I've, I was given a brush from Fudebobo and this is the other brush so as you guys can see it's very different because of the handle designs so there's actually one handle here that's all black and there's one that's all red and i kind of love that we have like you know these two different types of handle design and colors because like you know it just gives me the ability to remember which brush i'm going to use for lighter shades and which brush i can use for darker shades okay so i believe that's it so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this brush into action okay now before we continue by the way thank you so much um Fude Bobo for giving me this very nice My Melody um, like a microfiber towel. I love it. This brings back so much memories like you know especially when I was growing up in the 90s because I used to hang out at the Senryu store in my hometown a lot. So thank you, thank you. Okay so I'm very happy I have more microfiber towels that I can use for work or when we're doing videos. Okay so now let's continue. And I am just trying to think of the process because I only have one brush of this. So um, again if I like this brush and I like how it like you know works with me I'm sure I'm gonna purchase another one. So um, um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply um, like some foundation with a different brush on one side of my face and then I'm going to put like a you know, foundation powder on top and maybe some like you know finishing powder and blush using this one before I proceed and use this brush uh, with like you know, liquid or even like you know, cream foundation. So um, this is going to be a very interesting try on video for us today okay so please hang on with me. Okay, I'm going to start with some um, Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have a little bit of this here at the back of my hand. And I'm just going to spread this all over. So the consistency of this is very thin. So it's just going to leave a very nice like, a layer of color on my face. Again, I'm only going to apply this on one side of my face before we continue. Okay, so that's a thin layer of foundation down. And let me just apply a little bit of some um, concealer in my under eye area. Just to even everything up. Brighten everything. And let's buff that up. Alright, so that's my concealer down and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some setting powder into the under eye area first and I'm going to be using my Givenchy Prism Lead in Wall Rose. So I have a little bit of that here now at the cap and then I'm just going to pat the Koyudo High Grand Psycho Ho Foundation Brush here on the cap and I'm going to use this to pat the powder in my under eye area and I believe it kind of like does the job yeah so it was able to apply the powder now I initially thought that this wouldn't fit in my under eye area because it's just way too big but now that I like you know fit it here and mind you the brush head is very very soft by the way I don't feel any prickling sensation it's the it's a very nice luxurious feeling and there's a certain like you know um, density here in the middle that kind of like really does the job of patting in uh, the product but anyway so um, I kind of like the size of this uh, because it kind of like fits very nicely in this portion of my like you know under eye area and my inner cheek and this is the part where I usually uh, need to set things with like you know powder because if I don't like you know my pores are going to be very very obvious here and the reason why I also set this part of my face with more powder is because I try to avoid putting like you know cheek products here because uh, if like you know the blush extends way beyond like you know the apples of my cheeks when I smile I'm gonna get a highlight here I'm gonna look like a clown so I kind of like this for that so this kind of like does the job and I like it 
very nice instant application of color and it also like you know applies in a much more like in a bigger real estate but if you're someone who's um like you know into a much more um concise application of powder in the under eye area this brush might be too big for you okay all right so let's continue let's move on so now i'm gonna set the rest of my face and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use um a powder foundation with us this is my mac nc35 studio fix powder foundation and i'm gonna use this brush and i'm just gonna swirl it here all over the pan and this is how much product this brush head picks up i was not expecting that this is the amount of product that this brush head is going to pick up so um now i know that i have to be careful when i'm using this because i might pick up more product than necessary okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna tap this first all over my face okay so i think you guys can instantly see how opaque the application of this foundation powder is so if you are someone who likes to mattify your uh, face then this brush is actually perfect to use for that and let me just buff everything like in, in a circular motion and i kind of see that it's actually enabling me to apply a very nice like, you know layer of foundation powder and the reason why i'm using foundation powder right now is because if i use loose translucent powder we won't see it and like you know there's really no brainer when you're using um loose setting translucent powders yeah so as you guys can see when i'm just like you know using this brush in a buffing motion to buff in the powder foundation into the skin and it's giving my skin a very nice like you know even coverage nice like you know um mattifying effect i like that and let me do my forehead area so i picked up some powder from the pan i like this and of course if you want to have like you know to add more coverage in a certain area you can just pick up some of the product and you can pat it in I think you guys can already see that it's giving me like an you know, optimal uh, coverage and it's looking to be quite matte already mm. now i am not going to use this brush for like you know bronzer application um, for the main reason that the brush head is just way too small for my liking by the way um, i will not use this for contouring as well maybe you might but um i'm just concerned if i use this for contouring that you might just get one whole blob of like you know product in a certain area and you might have difficulty like you know blending it out and also for everything with my makeup um sentiments i like to use light layers and like you know i like to build it and with this brush um it will not allow you to build slowly because it's going to apply a very like you know high impact of color um upon application but in me saying that, let's use this brush for finishing powders. So let me just buff the brush head here on like, you know, a microfiber towel. And I have my Guerlain Meteorites here in medium. And let me just tap the brush head here onto the pearls. I don't know if you can see if it picked up product, but I can see it. As you guys can see, it instantly added the very nice blurring soft focus effect. So I kind of like this brush for that. So let me apply it all over. It did apply like you know some luminosity again and some life into my skin because that powder foundation just kind of like like it deadened my skin just a little bit. Okay, so this brush actually also does the job of like you know, applying finishing powders, which is actually great. But um, for me, for finishing powders, I like the brush head to be a little bit more fluffier than this because it just like you know disperses the product in a much more wider sense because again like you know as i said earlier just in the way that it's applying the powder foundation it's going to be in a very concise area precise area and you would need to buff it but the great thing with this is that when i'm just like, you know doing this buffing motion spreading the product i'm actually not seeing any product disturbance on my face so that's actually good okay All right so let me buff the foundation brush again here on a microfiber towel and let me pick up one of my most favorite like you know um, finishing powders this is from my um favorite favorite hourglass um palette so this is the ambient um what is this lighting edit mini this is no longer available but i love this powder here and i'm just like you know pressing the brush here onto the powder 
fits perfectly into the pan and let me just apply it here on my under eye area for instant highlight and soft focus effect hmm let me check okay very nice even coverage i like that again very easy to blend and very easy to layer ah fantastic this brush is working very nice with me today okay so it's time for us to add some blush and i'm going to use one of my most favorite og blushes the nars orgasm and i'm just going to press the brush head here and this is the amount of product that this brush head picks up and i'm just going to apply it all over my cheeks okay i'm just pressing the product and i'm gonna buff it Ooh. I kind of like how well, like, you know, the precise application of color that this uh, brush head makes me do. And then it enables me to buff it out as well. So it applies a much more intense um, color on the cheek, but it still gives off this very nice, soft, diffuse look that I actually like. Ah, very nice. I like this brush for that. Fantastic. Look at that. Very nice, precise, especially if you just want to create like, you know, a veil of color. But it's just like, you know, really right on top of the highest points of the cheeks. Look at that. See when I smile, look how precise that is. It's on my cheekbone. I love it. Okay. Very nice. I like that. I enjoyed this um, uh, part of the vlog that we're doing. Okay, so this is how this brush applies powder foundation, um, like, you know, loose setting powder and even like, you know, finishing powder and blush on my face. Alright, so now it's time for us to try and use this foundation brush for a foundation application. Now, I will not be using liquid foundation for us today because I'm sure liquid foundation will, like, you know, apply easily. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using some cream foundation. So this is my MAC Full Coverage um, Foundation. I am going to be mixing two colors for us today. So let's see, I'm going to be using C40, which has a very nice olive tone. I'm going to put a little bit of that here at the back of my hand. And I'm going to neutralize it just a little bit with some NW25 maybe. Yeah, so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to, um, like, you know, get my um, skin tone for this. But yeah, this is just an experiment. So let's just... Like, you know go with the flow okay so i have mixed the two shades now here at the back of my hand and do not worry you guys if like you know you're concerned why i'm using this brush for a foundation application it's because like, you know, it's undyed psycho hair so you won't have any trouble or any worry when you are actually like you know um washing this there'll be no dyes that will get washed out and it'll just like you know maintain its um durability and also its um, strength. And I was actually planning on, uh, like, you know, initially of using my Estee Lauder Double Wear foundation for this, but um, since those um, types of foundations are like you know long wearing and they tend to dry on the bristles of makeup brushes, um, I decided not to do that because again, um, this is made of Seikoho goat hair, and Seikoho goat hair um, they're a little bit um, also delicate. If you know what I mean. And this is what I loved about the Sonia G base one before because it is a mix of synthetic and goat hair. I am able to use this uh, with those types of foundations. Alright, so I'm just gonna I'm just buffing the cream foundation now here onto my skin. And I am actually like I'm loving the effect that this brush is doing to the cream foundation it's actually able to blend out the foundation formula it's also able to apply it in a very nice like you know thin layer all over very nice i like that good coverage as well nice strength with the bristles here i like that very very good can i see with my magnifying mirror here in front of me okay yeah it was actually able to apply a very nice thin layer on top good coverage as well sorry there's just a little bit of some like you know fallout from the bristle from the brush head which is to be expected because this is very very new i'm surprised that this brush was actually able to do this with us today 
fantastic so i'm actually glad that i tried this with this cream foundation okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to apply a little bit of some like you know concealer in the under eye area and i'm going to be using the same concealer as i used in my under eye area here and i'm just going to apply a little bit of that here ah sorry that was the illuminating side let me remove that flip to the other side okay there you go and i'm just going to use the same brush for I'm blending out this concealer. Okay, it actually did the job, but we I just find that the brush head is way too big. So if they're going to be able to come out with a much more smaller brush head than this, I think that would be perfect for like you know concealer application or spreading. Very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. So let me add some blush now. So I'm going to be using my NARS liquid blush here. So this is in the color Orgasm. I think I applied way too much of this at the back of my hand. Okay, so this picks up quite an amazing amount of color. So I have to be careful with this in the future. And I'm just stamping the blush here on the apples of my cheeks. And it's just way too intense and way too big. And it's applying the color in, a, in one spot. So I might not do this again. Let me just use my finger to blend out the edges here. So this is more appropriate for like, you know, um, foundation application than let's say liquid blushes. I think cream blushes, this might work as well, but you just have to be very careful with it because again, you don't, you don't, we don't want to have like one, like, you know, high impact of blush on the cheeks. And like, you know, here, as you see right now, I'm just using my fingers to blend it out. So. Um, it's adding another step into what is supposed to be like you know a much more easier step that you can do when you're applying blush with a brush so yeah but um, i do have to say though that it did apply the blush quite nicely nice layer very soft as well but it's just way too big like you know to apply blushes of this type of a formula but for powder it's great especially with shimmer so look at this orgasm blush here it applied very nicely here on my cheek with this brush okay so i don't think i can use this brush anymore for powder applications so i'm gonna get my koyuru bayushiki um brush here and i'm just gonna flip this wall rose powder here onto the cap i'm gonna pick up some of this and i'm gonna use this brush to apply this powder here my under eye area i think you guys can see the difference right now on how this brush applies powder in comparison to the um foundation brush here applying this loose powder in this under eye area the application of the powder is not as like you know um opaque it's very thinned out so if you are someone who likes like you know those type of powder application in your under eye area then you can actually use this brush for that but if you want a much more like you know opaque coverage like you know more intensity of the powder in the under eye area you can actually use this brush for that okay let me blend the powder here into my cheeks very nice i like that okay and to finish off this makeup look i'm gonna use my um foundation powder again but this time i'm gonna use my mizubake and i'm just gonna set the rest of my face so that this cream foundation won't like you know run and get disturbed now i do have to say though that i do actually like the brush head of this but if I wanted to apply a much more like, you know, thinned out layer of powder on the face, I would have preferred a brush head like this. So I'm sure you've seen me compare this earlier, right? But yeah, that's the reason why I love this Mizubake because the Mizubake, like, you know, it uh, applies powder in a much more larger sense on the face. Larger real estate, also softer, not as opaque, especially if I'm wearing cream foundations because cream foundations are already quite thick, so you don't need a lot of powder okay so i believe that's it that's my vlog for today i hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you guys how i got to know this koyuru bayushiki high, high grand psycho foundation brush so um i hope that you found this insightful and if you have any more questions about all the products that i use today or how i use this brush please let me know down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it all right so i'm gonna let you guys go now thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and i hope that you're having a good day wherever you are bye